Hey everyone and welcome to Paul's Hardware. This is my first ever tutorial video. And this video is all about how to do a clean install of Windows 8. It just so happens that if you've purchased Windows 8, uh, the retail version at least, you have gotten an upgrade version. And an upgrade means that you need to have an existing operating system installed. You need to already have Windows XP, for example, uh, in order to use this version as an upgrade. And that's why it's less expensive. Uh, but that also is what would potentially prevent you from doing a clean installation. And if you like computers, you probably like doing a clean installation because it just makes everything cleaner and fresher and it's faster and all that good stuff. So um, how do you actually do a clean install with the Windows 8 upgrade version? Uh, well, the sort of way that Microsoft would want you to do it is they would want you to take your existing operating system and do a clean install of that and then install Windows 8 on top of it. But there's some things that might prevent you from doing that. For example, let's say that you wanted to switch from 32-bit uh, Windows XP to 64-bit Windows 8. You technically are allowed to do that, but you technically, if you installed 32-bit Windows XP and then tried to do 64-bit Windows 8 on top of it, it would not allow you to do that. Now, in order to get Windows 8 to install cleanly uh, from a blank drive or SSD or whatever you're installing onto, uh, you're gonna need to install it first and then do a quick registry edit and then Windows 8 should activate and you should be good to go. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, here's what you will need. You will need your retail copy of Windows 8, or uh, the downloaded ISO version of Windows 8 if you go through the uh, really inexpensive thing, which is like they have it for like $40 right now, I think through January 31st, 2013. 40 bucks for Windows 8 Pro upgrade version is a great deal. So you need that, either the uh, actual physical disk like this or the ISO that you've downloaded. I'm going to show you guys how to take that physical disk or ISO and make a little uh, loader USB drive off of it like this. You need a 4 gig USB drive for that. And then, of course, you will need your existing version of whatever OS you're upgrading from. So whether it's Windows XP or Windows XP 64 or Windows 7. And if you're running Windows 7 and you want to keep running Windows 7, that's fine. Go ahead. I have no problem with that. You should have no problem with that. Windows 7 is a great operating system. But, especially if you're running an older version, you might want to upgrade to Windows 8. And hopefully, this video will help you do that. So let's get started with step one. And uh, step one is always going to be... Back up your data. Please back up your data. I am 100% not responsible for any data loss as a result of this. So back up your data, back up your apps. Make sure you've got those stored on a separate external hard drive somewhere else. Not your computer that you're updating. Now, if you're okay with loading very slowly, you can load directly off of the disk that came in your retail package. Uh, if you want to do that, then just go ahead and jump ahead to the point where I'm going to tell you guys how to boot off of the disk or off of the USB drive. Uh, if you want to do it much, much faster and you want to make a little bootloader USB thing like that, uh, then you should follow these instructions. Now, if you download directly from Microsoft, which I haven't done because I haven't done the little $40 uh, deal, uh, they should be giving you an ISO to download. You download that ISO, they want you to burn it onto a disk, and they want you to load it. What I am doing, since I have the disk here, is I'm going to be loading the disk into my computer. Actually, my wife's computer. Yes, this has been my wife's computer that I'm using for all of the Windows 8 videos I have been doing. And I'm going to make an ISO from that disk. Uh, there's a few different apps out there that can do this. Uh, the one that I have found to work most consistently for me is actually uh, ISO Recorder. ISO Recorder, Alex Feynman is the gentleman who has created this one. You can download this. Uh, the Windows 7 version works just fine, whether you're using Windows 7 or Windows 8. And yes, I am using Windows 8 already. Sorry. I'm going to load a fresh install of Windows 8 on top of Windows 8. You can do that too. Now I have my actual DVD drive right there. I'm going to right click on it and uh, ISO Recorder should give you the option to create an image from the CD or DVD. Oops. Yes. Create an image. Uh, that will pop up ISO Recorder 3.1 and all you got to do is uh, tell it where to put the image. I'll tell it to put it on my desktop. And I'll label it something useful like Win8 64-bit, and I'll hit save, and then I'll hit next. And now it's going to basically go through a little process, take all that data from the disk, make it into a little image file of that disk on my desktop. All right, so the ISO creation is finished. Next up, we want to get the Windows 7 USB DVD tool. Windows 7 USB. Yes, Windows 7 USB DVD download tool. Click on that. It's right here. I know it says Windows 7, still works for Windows 8. Click right here to open. That will actually download it. And next up, you're going to want to take your USB drives. Make sure there's nothing important on that USB drive. 
Uh, again, you need four gigabytes minimum. This is actually an eight gig drive. It doesn't matter if it's USB 2 or USB 3. USB 2 might give you a little bit better compatibility. We've loaded up the Windows 7 USB DVD download tool setup. This program actually needs to install. There it goes. I, I, I guess that's finished. Let's see how good the Windows 8 search tool is. All right. Windows. Let's check apps. Windows Defender Media Player. Oh, no, there it is. Okay. Windows 7. All right. So go ahead and run that. And then this is a pretty easy four-step process. Uh, step one is to choose the ISO file. It's right here on the desktop. I browse to desktop, and there's the ISO file. Go ahead and choose that. Click next. Choose the media type. We're going to be doing it onto a USB. Uh, now, for those of you folks who might be downloading the ISO, uh, and th this is actually where you would make the DVD, but again, USB is just going to be much faster, although DVD can be an option if you're having trouble getting the USB uh, drive to boot, or just in general. Um, it will just be, it'll be slower. All right, so I want to choose my drive. I've only got one available. It's my 8 gig flash drive. Then uh, begin copying. Confirm that you want to erase everything on that drive, and it will take a few minutes to format the drive and create your Windows 8 USB installer. And the USB device was created successfully, so next up I'm going to go ahead and do my clean install. Uh, a couple things to note. I'm just going to be restarting this computer and doing the clean install right on there. So my USB drive is already plugged in and my SSD that I'm installing onto is already in there. Make sure you have your Windows 8 key on you right now. I'm guessing if you do the downloadable version that Microsoft will email it to you or something along those lines, you do need it before you actually get through the Windows 8 installation. So make sure you have that. Another thing that I recommend at this point is to unplug any drives from your computer apart from the o the drive that you're going to install the OS on as well as the removable drive that we just made. The next thing I'm going to do is restart and boot off of that USB drive instead of off of the hard drive. Now in order to do this you need to access your system BIOS or UEFI. There's a few different ways to do that and there's um, lots of lots of different UEFI motherboards and they all have sort of different interfaces and different ways they name things. But um, fortunately my ASRock board here has a uh, quick boot selection. So by pressing F11, I can actually just pull up to select the boot device and boot straight from it. That's a really handy feature. I know like there's some gigabyte boards that have that. And I think a lot of motherboards are really implementing that. But if you have an older motherboard, for example, you may need to hit delete to go into the BIOS and then change your boot order. Or sometimes you can go into the BIOS and do kind of like this where you just tell it to boot off of this right now. But for the time being, I am going to boot off of my USB drive I have plugged in. And that's going to go ahead and start up the Windows 8 installer. At this point, you will stare at a blue new Windows logo for at least a few minutes. Now, don't worry. Eventually, this little spinny thing will pop up, and um, it will proceed with the installation. But especially on slower computers, you might just be looking at that for a little, like, a few minutes. So it's jumping into Windows 8 setup. You might notice this is remarkably similar to the way Windows 7 setup looked. Uh, cho choose your language and your keyboard input method. Click next. We want to install. There's also a repair option. You can boot off of this to do some repairs. Uh, when it does starting and goes through setup, then we'll be able to choose what type of install we want to do. And of course, we can't forget to input our product key. That's why I told you guys. You need the product key up front this time. That's one big difference between Windows 7 and Windows 8 installations. Windows 8 you got to cop it up right away, and once you've loaded the OS and you're online, it will automatically activate. Next up, accept the license terms, and here's where you're going to make the key decision between upgrading and custom. Uh, if you choose upgrade, you can do that, and if you've already got Windows uh, like XP or anything installed, you can do an in-place upgrade. We want to do custom, because we want a clean install. Uh, now, this is sort of a typically formatted Windows 7 drive. You'll notice there's two partitions. One is a system partition. Uh, if you're loading onto a different uh, drive, bear in mind it's going to format it no matter what. So I usually go into drive options. I usually delete any existing partitions, like so. You got a OneDrive with an allocated space. You can make a new partition, or you can just click Next, and it will do it automatically. Uh, and this, again, very, very, very similar to Windows 7 installation. It'll go ahead and go through this process, copying files, getting ready, installing features, and pretty soon you'll be up and running. This only takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Next up, we'll have a few restarts, and uh, again, it'll swirly sign with getting ready, and it'll get devices ready and whatnot. 
One really noticeable improvement of Windows 8 over Windows 7, and I say this after having set this computer over here up with Windows 7, a clean install, the boot time was like maybe 20 seconds. And literally Windows 8 boots in half that time, which is pretty awesome. And once you've gone through that quick setup, and uh, I wasn't timing this specifically, I, my, my guesstimation is maybe that was 10 minutes. Uh, but next up, of course, you want to pick your color. You go with green. Oh, we need to name this computer. This is B Town. Next up, choose your settings. Uh, I'm going to go with Express here, although I've, occasionally I might go in there and change things. And then, of course, we can sign in uh, with our Microsoft ID. And this is actually pretty handy to do. It will take your settings from different computers and apply them and kind of make you feel a little bit more at home. I don't use this email though. This is a public email. So don't email me at this email address and expect me to reply. And we're done. But as with any clean install, there's still, of course, some work to be done. The thing we do need to check on is Windows activation. So I'm going to go to Control Panel. I'm going to do that by right-clicking in the bottom left to activate my little hidden uh, start menu. Bring up Control Panel. I'm going to search for Activate Activation or most of Activate. Uh, in the Action Center should be Windows Activation. If you click on that, it will bring up Windows activation and it will tell you if Windows is activated or not. Now here is where my experience is going to differ a little bit from yours because this computer already has Windows 8 activated on it. This key is already tied to this computer. But uh, the difference you're going to see is right here it might say Windows was unable to activate. And it does that because it detects that it was a clean install and you have an upgrade and you can't do that. So what we need to do now is to actually change that in the registry to allow Windows to activate properly. In order to do that we're going to take some advice from our friends at 7Forums. So the site we're on is 7Forums.com. The article is Windows 7 Clean Install with an Upgrade Windows 7 Version. And this uh, sort of is the old way that I always used to uh, do this same sort of thing with Windows 7. Uh, the thing here that we want to get to is the part that talks about the registry edit. There's a registry edit and then there's a quick command prompt entry. Uh, they have a little file you can download. I'm not going to recommend doing that, although I've heard it does work, but usually I just do it myself. So we want to go in the registry, we want to navigate to this registry folder, and then we want to change one value from media boot install. So I'm going to right click down here again, I'm going to go to run to bring up a command prompt. I'm going to type in regedit, R-E-G-E-D-I-T, and hit OK. This needs to run as an administrator and it will ask you. Next up we're going to navigate H key local machine software Microsoft Windows current version, and then all the way down to, wait, what's the last one? Ah, setup, and then ubi. All right, so setup, ubi, o-o-b-e. Under the o-o-b-e folder, you'll see an, a registry entry called media boot install. Double click it. You'll find the value to be one. Change the value to zero. Hit OK. Now, folks, please bear in mind that editing your registry is a very, very tricky task, and really, you do not want to do anything else in here. Please do not. Again, I'm not responsible for anything you do to your computer by messing around with that stuff. Next up, open an elevated command prompt. Guess what? With Windows 8, not only do they give you the option to load a command prompt here from the hidden start menu, but also command prompt admin. So that's what we want to do. Command prompt admin. Once again, user account control will ask for your permission to do what you just told it to do. And then we want to type this command. S-L-M-G-R, then a space, then dash, re-arm. Hit enter, wait a moment, then you get a little pop-up that says command completed successfully. Please restart the system for the changes to take effect. Hit OK, get out of there, and then restart. I'm going to do it by hitting Alt F4 from the desktop. I'm going to restart. After the restart, Windows should, re should load back up and should activate properly. And it'll do that in the background, you won't even notice anything happened. The only way you can do it really is by going back to the sort of search going back to the control panel again and looking up Windows activation and then you'll be able to find out, yes, Windows activated and you're good to go. So there you go guys, Windows 8 is now installed and I installed it cleanly without the need to first install Windows XP or the uh, Windows operating system that I was legitimately upgrading from. I hope you guys have found this video helpful and informative. If you'd like to find more just like it, you can check out my Paul's Hardware YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Paul's Hardware. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.